Hi folks, um, this is John Burek with PC Magazine. I'm here with Chris Stobing, one of our hardware analysts. And we have a very special product here today for you. Um, we're actually only able to do an unboxing with it. We haven't actually tested it yet. And it's a product that's actually been rumored for a while and talked about for a while from Intel. So uh, Chris, um, we have this large blue box here. Do you want to do the honors on it? Sure. What do we have? It's a little... Well, so what, what, what do we have here? It looks like a polyhedron of sorts. Uh, Chris, what's the deal with this? This is the Intel i9-9900KS. Hmm, there's a S at the end of it? I know there's a 9900K already on the market. What's the deal with the S? So the S denotes that it's actually a little bit faster than the Intel i9-9900K, and it has a boost clock that goes a little bit faster. Oh, okay, cool. Well, before we get too much into it, why don't we open it up? Um, here we go. All right, Chris, you want to do the honors? Sure thing. So not really sure how to get fully into this guy, but All oh, right. there it is. Oh, All right, right. so go. that comes off in sort of a pattern. You hmm. might be able to po post that on the wall. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Kind of like a, hmm. Those of you who play role-playing games like dungeon tiles or something of that sort. There you go. And then I'm trying to figure out where you get inside. So this is an unboxing video, and normally you just open the box, but with this, there is yeah, oh, come in any instructions, uh, there's huh? a, quite a few sides. I mean, we could do the coconut oh, approach. There oh, there we go. Uh, I was gonna say, just, just crack it open and... like a cog of coconut. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that's the holding case, and then inside you got one more box to get through, which oh, is okay. this cardboard box, and that's right there. All so right. we've got a box within a box within a box. What's the third box? Third box is where the processor is actually being held. You can see it right in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we might need the, oh, no, we're good. Cutting implement we're again? No, we're all good, we're all good. Okay, and then one good. more box goes into one more plastic box <laughs> surrounded by a foam box. And now we've got our processor. Oh, all right, here we go. All right, so um, what do we have on the top here? Intel Confidential NA and a bunch of numbers and a four gigahertz um, on top of there. What's the four gigahertz about? So the four gigahertz is the base clock. So when the big difference in the 9900K to the 9900KS, uh, and the 9900K has been available for about a year, two years now, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the KS is brand new. Uh, we don't actually know about availability yet. We're not totally sure on when that's coming out. We haven't gotten the information yet. But by the time you see this, we probably will have some performance stats and availability available to all of you. Right. Um, so, so the K, um, the original Core i9-9900K has been on the market a bit. Um, that one, as I understand, is an eight core, 16 thread chip. And what's the difference uh, at a fundamental level between that and this, this KS chip? So these are effectively pretty much the same chip. The only difference being that when you talk about base clock and boost clock, base clock is essentially how fast a chip can go at its lowest or how it, how it will operate just kind of on its own. When you're just sitting in Windows, it'll probably sit around that base clock, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, and then the boost clock is really when you kick things up. Let's say you're rendering something in Adobe or you're playing a game or you're doing something that really demands a lot out of the chip, uh, especially on more than eight, uh, more than four cores, excuse me. That is when the rubber sort of meets the road between these processors. And that's what the KS is designed to do to take, uh, take a, to separate itself a little bit from the K is that in the original 9900K, uh, only four of the cores could max out at 5.0 and then the rest would usually hover around 4.7 to 4.8. The 9900KS, all of them go up to five um, comfortably, safely, and you can expect that kind of performance uh, in your daily browsing or your daily gaming or your daily rendering, whatever it may be. Right, so if you're hitting five uh, gigahertz on all eight cores of this thing, presumably it's gonna generate a lot of heat. So cooling for the 9900K, as I recall, they recommended, Intel recommended a liquid cooling solution. Yes. Probably the same thing here? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Nothing, no, no thermal improvements have really been made here. Nothing about the TDP has really changed. This is, or the TDP has changed, excuse me, but nothing about uh, the cooling requirements have really changed. This is still gonna be a pretty hot chip and you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a, a cooling solution that kind of meets that in the middle. Right, so what actually would this compete with on the AMD side? I mean, obviously on the Intel side, it's a slightly refined 9900K. Um, on the AMD side, we have you know the 12 core, 24 thread, 3900X. Um, how does that shake out? I mean, there, we don't know pricing on this, but we know the pricing on the 9900K was the same as for that AMD processor. Yes. So the, uh, the Ryzen 9 3900X, as many people know, came out uh, this summer. Um, very successful chip, a lot of people loved it, including us, we gave it an editor's choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. We did, yeah. okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> gave it an editor's choice. Um, it's a great chip all around, and uh, we can only speculate whether or not this is Intel's answer directly to the, 30, the release of the 3900X from AMD. 
uh, but we can say with confidence that this chip is absolutely made to perform just a little bit better in particular applications uh, than the 9900K. Right, yeah, because the idea typically with a chip like this would be that um, Intel's taking a look at um, the dyes that it's uh, getting from the fab, and uh, this is a better binned version of the 9900K, meaning it's essentially the same chip as the 9900K, but it has been tested so that the cores are guaranteed to hit higher speeds than a 9900K would be guaranteed to. Exactly. This is right. known uh, in so other terms, it's kind of known as the silicon lottery. Sometimes you'll get a chip that is a little bit more forgiving, both thermally and in performance. And Kate, you can overclock it a little bit higher, and it's a little bit, uh, it's called the golden. The golden sample. The golden sample, yeah. yeah, that was it, yeah. Right. So you can get you can get a high bin, which is like, it'll it'll perform way better, and then sometimes you'll get a low bin, and that is just a, the nature of silicon production. Sometimes right. you'll get good ones, sometimes you'll get bad ones. Right, so if you bought a 9900K chip before, you might have gotten one that performed close to this, or you might have gotten one that performed somewhat lesser. Exactly. If, and this is usually edge cases. I mean, if you're overclocking, if you're using um, applications that really stress all the cores at all times and you have a good thermal solution in place. Um, so in a sense, what you're saying about the silicon lottery, this is sort of like guaranteeing a lottery winner, so to speak. Exactly. Right. And when you buy an Intel i9-9900K, um, you could be getting a chip that is almost as good as the 9900 ks and the only way you're really going to figure that out is through overclocking, through testing, through running it through a lot of applications that have uh, that full eight core requirement. Otherwise, it's sort of minimal. Uh, gaming really is not going to show you the difference between these two chips, um, but that's all stuff that we're going to be testing later on. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, I don't know if you'd like to get a closer look at the chip here. I, I sort of waved it around a bit before, but we'll open it up for a little bit of viewing. Um, so this will work in um, the same motherboards that a 9900K would, which would be the Z390. Z390. Yes, yes, the Z390 chipset, which will enable the overclocking. And you will also want a uh, you know a robust liquid cooling solution. Um, you'll notice in this giant box of stuff here, there is no cooler. Most chips come with a at least a stock air cooler in the box, a fan. Um, Intel's Core i9s don't, and they expect you to bring your own to the party. Um, so we flip the chip over here a little bit, and uh, we can get some close-up action on it. Um, anything else on this? We don't know pricing yet. Um, we don't have exact details on when it will become available, but we can say the 9900K sells for $499. Uh, Ryzen 9 3900X, its main competitor, sells for $499. So guess would be this is going to be more expensive, but not hugely more expensive because you're essentially talking about the same chip with slightly um, up specs. Exactly. So I'm guessing, and this is pure conjecture, somewhere between five and 600, probably in the midpoint 550, 560. We'll see what happens when uh, Intel releases the actual pricing and that will presumably be in our full review at the time we, uh, we hit it. Yep. Um, other difference I just realized we could um, touch on is with the Ryzen 9 3900X, um, you don't have integrated graphics. So in other words, if you want to uh, build a system or upgrade a system uh, to a motherboard that can accommodate that chip, you will also need a video card. This one does have onboard graphics, but most folks who are going to um, build a system based on something like an i9 are probably going to have a GPU. Yes. Right, but if you're sort of putting together a system piecemeal, you want the best chip you can get in there on the uh, Intel mainstream line, but you can't afford the video card of your dreams, so you can use the onboard graphics until you can save up for that video card. Exactly, and the only other, uh, the, the processor that doesn't have the Intel, uh, integrated graphics is the Intel i9-9900KF. Uh, which is being sold separately come from both of these SKUs. It's just another It's another processor that the only difference being between the 9900K and the 9900KF is that it doesn't have that IGP inside right. of it. Right. Presumably it's the same chip and just when they came off the fab, the IGP didn't come up to spec, so they disabled it. Exactly. And you, know, you could get it slightly cheaper. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, um, Intel announced um, some price adjustments and one of the price adjustments was that the KF series chips would be slightly cheaper than the Ks, whereas before they were in practice selling for about the same thing. So it was essentially, you know, same price with or without integrated graphics, why not get it with? So well, anyway, what we have here is the um, Core i9-9900KS from Intel. Um, should be debuting uh, later this month or early November. That's a uh, educated guess there. And um, please look to PCMag.com for a full review of this chip once we're done. Chris will be uh, working hard on it.